Hi, Ben Carpenter here. I'm going to talk with you about body composition analysis and specifically bioelectrical impedance analysis or BIA. How accurate is bioelectrical impedance analysis for measuring your body fat? So this is the third video in the series. The first one discusses different models of body composition analysis. That's two, three and four compartment models. If you have no idea what I'm talking about when I say that the four compartment model this one here is the best model we have for measuring body composition. Watch that video first and come back to this. So, BIA. What it does is it sends a small current through your body, measures resistance of um, lean body mass and fat mass. So they will conduct electricity slightly differently due to water and electrolyte content within muscle tissue. So if you're using a handheld device, current will go through one arm, out the other arm. If you were using a stand-on device, it will go up one leg, across your lower trunk and down the other leg. So some devices will miss entire sections of your body. So for example, if you were someone who was storing a lot of fat in your legs and you were using a handheld device, you can understand why your reading might be different to someone, say a male, who stores more fat around the abdomen and less in the legs, for example. Um, BIA is, in my opinion, quite temperamental. For example, if you go on the Tanita website and you look at the recommendations for ensuring an accurate reading, there are certain things that they recommend everybody follows to try and guarantee the best degree of accuracy. So these include not measuring after excessive food intake, not measuring after excessive fluid intake, um, not measuring after exercise, um, making sure the soles of your feet are clean if you're using a stand-on device. Um, avoid cha uh, drastic changes in temperature as that could affect the reading. Um, avoid um, skin contact, i.e. don't keep your arms by your side. And if your thighs are touching in the middle, put a towel, like a dry towel, between your thighs to stop uh, the current going across. So there are things that you have to follow to try and guarantee the, the best degree of accuracy. Um, in my opinion, some of these demonstrate shortfalls in it. So for example, if um, hydration status can have a, a significant um, impact, it means that alcohol could in theory have a significant impact. Um, like I say, if you've exercised earlier in the day, depending on how much fluid you, you've had, it could throw off the, re the readings. Um, I know a coach who measured the morning after um, in their description having a high amount of carbohydrate and salty food and it's showing a significant gain in lean body mass the next morning, probably due to water retention. So th these are some of the issues with BIA. So in terms of accuracy, in one study compared to the four compartment model the standard deviation was 4.8% for men and 3.3% for women. So if you're looking at margins of error between 4.8% and 3.3%, you may think that if you are tracking change over time, although there's a margin of error, you would be able to identify a trend. For example, if it's still fluctuating because of the margin of error, but the trend overall is going down, you could assess um, fat loss or fat gain. Um, unfortunately, it isn't quite the case, and I'll explain uh, in a second. So another study identified a 2.8% um, day-to-day deviation. So if you're measuring yourself on a daily basis, you could get a 2.8% difference in body fat just from day-to-day -day readings. Um, this also showed, in, in terms of females, that there was a significant difference one week pre and one week post menstrual cycle. So if you are a female who's using bioelectrical impedance analysis, keep that in mind so that one week pre and one week post menstrual cycle, you might find larger fluctuations in reading. So could you assume that there's a margin of error and use it to track a trend over time? That's how a lot of people would tend to use bioelectrical impedance devices. However, there was um, a study on bodybuilders and it showed an 8% margin of error 
as well as an 8% margin of error for, tra for tracking individual change over time. So, for example, you could lose 5% body fat and it could say that you've gained 3% body fat. That would be within the 8% margin. Or you could lose 8% body fat and it would show no change. Or you could lose 4% body fat and it would show a 4% gain. So an 8% margin of error is massive. Um, this isn't actually an isolated case either. In uh, another piece of research, there was one individual uh, within the group where a female had her fat mass overestimated by 8.2%. So despite the rest of the group having more accurate readings, this was one example within that group, you can imagine how problematic an 8.2% overestimation of fat mass would be. So there's a margin of error that's so wide that for some people, unless you were going to lose a lot of body fat or gain a lot of body fat, this margin of error could undo a lot of progress. For example, my body fat very rarely will, will ever go up towards, say, 15%. It will always be below 15%. So if I was sitting at 10% year round, dieting down to maybe six for photo shoots or going up a few percent um, through lean gain phases, all of that will pretty much be within an 8% margin of error. So I could track my entire annual change in body fat and all of that is within margin of error. So if someone was 40% body fat and they lost 20%, this would still show uh, uh, fat loss obviously because the fat loss was so big but to most people the margin of error is um, it described in, in one piece of research that I've quoted already as unacceptably wide for tracking individual change so the relevance of you using it to assess your body composition I, I, would, I would question it entirely because I'm not even sure if there is a sensible way to implement it um, to ensure accuracy so, to summarise, I personally do not recommend bioelectrical impedance analysis. It has been shown in some research to be a poorer predictor of body fat percentage than an equation based off BMI. And anyone who understands body composition will know why BMI is flawed. Because, yeah, anyway, it has been shown in some research to be less accurate than equations based off BMI, body mass index measurement. So in theory, you could track change over time. However, the margin of error is so wide that you would have to look at how much fat loss you're going to get and how that fits within the margin of error. For example, if you're a male at 10% body fat and you're aiming to get down to six, all of that is within documented margin of error. So you could get down to six and it could show no change or even show a 4% gain. So I would personally not recommend bioelectrical impedance analysis devices. Technology within this, I'm sure will improve at some point. Um, this isn't necessary to write off all bioelectrical impedance analysis devices because they will differ. Each study will specify what device they used. But in general, to discuss the technology on the whole. At the moment, I do not recommend it unless you're very, very, very overweight and you're expecting very drastic changes in body composition over time. In which case, you could take them at long intervals to try and mitigate some of the margin of error that could cause. So I hope you found this useful. Please feel free to ask any questions and post on my Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash Ben Carpenter Personal Training or tweet me on my Twitter page, which is BDC Carpenter. And thank you for watching. Bye.